Ooh, what's up, nerds and geeks? My name is OMG WTF LOL FTW BRB. Welcome back to more Total Extreme Wrestling 2016. We are playing as the WWF in the year 2002. Booking our way through the invasion angle as we make our way down the road to WrestleMania. And it is finally time to make our stop at our little bit of a pit stop here at No Way Out. In fact, there is no way out, nerds and geeks. You can't click off the video until it's over. There's no way out. You gotta stay on. That's the rules. <laughs> Either way, uh, this pay-per-view is gonna be a little interesting, to be honest. I'm not as confident in this pay-per-view as I am with some in the past. Um, there's some things here where I'm kind of wondering how it's gonna go. It's more of a test pay-per-view. I'm not expecting, um this to be the best show we've ever put on. I really like the way that I had this, you know, laid this pay-per-view out from, you know, the matches and the angles and all that. I really like the way I did that, but, um, yeah, this isn't, you know, this is the pay-per-view before WrestleMania. This is like, it, it's more of a, it's, I don't want to call it a test. It's just, it kind of is a test at the same time for me to see like, all right, what exactly am I doing here? So, uh, with that being said, let's just jump in on this pay-per-view and let's see how we do. Okay, so we got a couple of pre-show bouts. Uh, the first pre-show bout is just a random fatal four-way match with the four uh, mid-card talents that didn't get on the card, so I figured why the hell not. We go to a 72 B-, minus, decent wrestling, not much way in heat. That's kind of obvious considering all four of these men are faces. Uh, Bradshaw goes on to defeat Al Snow, Rikishi, and Val Venus when Bradshaw defeats Val Venus with the clothesline from hell. Val was the weak link here. He's struggling to keep up with everyone else's in-ring performance. I kind of let the game do this one. I didn't pick a winner, so it chose Bradshaw on its own being. Good choice game. Al Snow with an in-ring performance of a 66. Bradshaw with a 74. Rikishi with a 63. And Val Venus with a 52 in-ring performance. Al Snow is improving in Rumble. As we jump into our main event of the pre-show, six-man tag team action, solid 81B rating here. We have a decent pre-show match. Kane and the Dudley Boys going over Ron Simmons and the Boogie Knights, Disco Inferno and Tank Abbott. Originally, I was going to have it be Disco and Alex Wright, but if you guys remember, Alex Wright got injured from some sort of like stamp-looking thing, so I figured I'd just let him sit it out and uh, put Tank in here. Uh, Kane ended up defeating Disco Inferno with the Tombstone Pile Driver. In terms of in-ring work, Kane was head and shoulders above everybody else, while Tank Abbott was the weak link here. So Kane looked good out there. Devon Dudley had a 71 in-ring performance. Bubba Ray Dudley with a 72. Kane with a 91. Tank Abbott with a 44 in-ring performance. Disco Inferno with a 57. And Ron Simmons with a 76. Disco is improving in performance, as is Devon Dudley. All right. Let me take a quick drink here. And let's jump into our opening match of the night, which obviously is going to be Goldberg. But our opening angle of the night gets a 100 A-star rating here. Just your typical Goldberg entrance. Nothing really to write home about. People love Goldberg's entrance, though, of course. Got all the security guards around there. He... Head butts the door, hopefully not busting himself open in the process. Makes his way all the way down to the ring, you know, inhaling the smoke from the fireworks, blowing it out of his nose. Just being Goldberg, being the general badass that he is. Uh, Dusty Rhodes and the King were pretty weak. That's fine. What can you do? Got the show off to a strong start. Crowd got, you know, got the gang. People love Goldberg's entrance. Goldberg was good. All right. So this next match is kind of a little bit of a test for Goldberg. I haven't been putting him in a long matches. In fact, this isn't really that much of a long match. It is 10 minutes long, but I just kind of wanted to test him out here, see how he really does. I don't expect him to get gassed. I don't think that's how this game is going to work, but still. 79 solid B, not too bad of a way to open up the show, but it's definitely not something I would want to main event my show with. So again, Goldberg's kind of a weird person because, I mean, here he has an in-ring performance of a 95, but again, it's only 10 minutes, so... I might have to cheat and check his stamina. That's the only thing that really scares me is stamina. Anyway, 79 solid B here. We go on to an exceptional match. Goldberg going over the Giant in 10 minutes, 3 seconds after pinning him with the spear. So he doesn't even bother with the jack, uh, jackhammer. 
yeah, Jack Hammer just hits him with the spear. Crowd was hot for this match. Goldberg had an in-ring performance of a 95. Giant with an in-ring performance of a 91. So they're both on top of their games. It's just, of course, it's a shorter match. If we look here in the dirt sheet, I guarantee it'll tell me um, time. Hold on. Yeah, penalized for a short match length. So that is something that we'll have to keep an eye out. But again, I have to kind of watch Goldberg here. It was well booked, so that's good. Uh, either way, Goldberg gets the victory over the Giant. I'd imagine this being just a, you know, a, I didn't make it the wild brawl, but this is definitely like just a wild brawl going on here. Uh, Giant just tossing Goldberg around, so Goldberg probably doing some selling here, which is why we got the lack of selling note. Either way, good start to the crowd, or to show. Goldberg's improving in performance as well. We then jump to a 97 A star rating in the backstage. We're with lo um, we're with locker room. <laughs> We're in the locker room with Jericho and Christian, Vitamin C. Jericho goes on to say, Tonight is the night, my friend. Tonight we finally show up the world that we're the top protege mentor team. But more importantly, we prove that you should and would have been the Intercontinental Championship if you've gotten your one-on-one -on -one match. And we're also going to prove that I'm the best in the world at what I do. And do you know what I do, Christian? And that's when Christian kind of just looks at him and he goes, Uh win and then Jericho's like well yeah win but tonight they're gonna call me rattlesnake done Jericho because it's rattlesnake season and I'm gonna wrangle me a snake tonight and now Christian kind of getting pumped up by Jericho is like yeah yeah but you know what Chris I hate to be the bearer of bad news but it's not snake season it's rhino season and don't tell anyone but you're looking at the top hunter and then Jericho rhino season no, you idiot, it's snake season. And then we get a little bit of a fun segment here where the two just go back and forth, kind of like the Looney Tunes, you know, duck season, rabbit season, but instead of it being that, it's snake season, rhino season, snake season, rhino season, stuff like that. And then finally Jericho goes, wait, 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 wait. Hold up a second, Christian. I see the problem here. It's not snake or rhino season, it's snake and rhino season. And you know what, Christian? Tonight, I heard the hunting's great. And probably Christian just, you know, nodding his head, smiling. A little bit of a fun little promo cut here by the two. I was, I originally had a kind of a little bit darker, but because rhino hunting is legitimately illegal, and this is the WWF, I didn't want to, like, make it too hard. So I try to keep a little bit of realism in here. But uh, either way, a little fun segment here, you know, Jericho and Christian cutting a promo on uh, Austin and Rhino, who they'll meet later on tonight in tag team action. I just really like the idea of them going, R Rhino season, snake season, Rhino season. It gained heat to the feud as well, so that's good. We jump into the next segment, which is just a quick little segment. Solid ADB, the arrival of Shane McMahon and Booker T. They arrive in style. Limo pulls up. Probably some nice little sexy ladies coming out with them. Booker T looking happy, Shane McMahon looking happy, they got bubbling wine, stuff like that. They're talking about nothing too special here. Like I said, they're just arriving. We then jump into our next match of the night, which gets a 75 B- minus rating here. We have a decent match uh, that had decent wrestling, but not much way in heat. Vampiro going over Billy Kidman in 10 minutes, 14 seconds, with the nail in the coffin, making his third defense of the Cruiserweight Championship. So uh, there you have that. Vampiro is getting better at his gimmick. Billy Kidman with an in-ring performance of a 64. Vampiro with a 65. And all in all, not too bad for the Cruiserweight Championship match. Ooh, Vampiro debuted a new spot that got great heel heat. Psychology will be helped and it will be used as a go-to spot in the future. Good for Vampiro, man. We then go backstage to a 100 A-star rating here. Backstage, we see the WCW World Heavyweight Champion Kurt Angle, he's sitting on like one of those benches or chairs in the backstage locker room area. It looks like he's either thinking or praying. Take it as it is. He's, you know, just kind of head down, you know, thinking to himself or praying, like I said. And that's when Triple H and Stephanie McMahon Helmsley walk in. Angle, you know, immediately shoots up and he's like, what the hell do you want? And then that's when Triple H says, stand up and stop sulking. You know, I don't like you and you don't like me. But tonight, I'm rooting for you. So you better win. And then that's when Kurt, kind of taken aback by Triple H's statement, goes on to say, You're rooting for me? What's the occasion? 
Could it be that Triple H has bought in to my idea? Or have you two hit a financial plunge that you had to bet the whole house on me? Shut up. You know what, but you're damn right I'm betting the whole house on you tonight, Kurt. Because my WrestleMania main, a spot, main event lot now lies on your shoulders. Because if you lose tonight, then Sting goes on the challenge for the WWF title. But if and when you win, Sting's pride will lead him to challenging will lead him to challenging you once again, leaving the WWF title for me. You got it? And then that's when Kirk just goes, Yeah, yeah, I got it. And you won't have to worry about me losing tonight, Triple H, because I plan on winning. But after Mania, if you are the WWF champion? Well, let's just say the companies aren't the only thing I'm looking to merge. And they kind of have a little bit of a stare down as, uh, you know, Triple H walks out. So, too long, didn't read. <laughs> Bad promo aside, Triple H pretty much coming in there telling Kurt, you got to win because if you don't win, Sting's going to challenge for the WWF title. And that puts my main event spot at risk, though. There you have it. Uh, he is getting better at his gimmick. Jerry Lawler still weak at the announce table. Come on, King. We then jump into our next match of the night, which gets a 78 solid B rating here. We have a decent matchup. Lance Storm going over Eddie Guerrero in 15 minutes, 46 seconds after the last call super kick, making his 17th defense of the WCW Canadian Championship. Back and forth action. I'd imagine Eddie Guerrero countering and getting out of the sharpshooter many times, which leads to an unexpected, excuse me, Unexpected last call super kick, taking Eddie Guerrero down for the three count with Lance Storm retaining the championship. Eddie with a in-ring performance of a 75, Lance Storm with a 77. No worker improvements here as we move on to our next segment of the night. 79 solid B as Mean Gene Okerlund is backstage with the flock. He goes on to say, hello fans, Mean Gene here and joining me at this time is the WWF hardcore champion Raven alongside the flock. Raven, tonight you'll defend the Hardcore Championship against Matt Hardy. A very different Matt Hardy. And that's when Raven goes on to say, Go on and say it, Mean Gene. Matt Hardy is slowly breaking. His fear of being passed by his younger brother is becoming a reality. So now he scrambles, trying to grab whatever gold he can, he can to prove to everyone that he's the better brother. And that has led him into my house of fun, Matthew. Just like a mouse stuck in a maze, I've twisted your mind, leading you into some false hope until the trap finally snaps down onto your neck. Tonight is the night the trap snaps. And then Raven walks away with Mean Gene just, you know, all right, back to you guys or something like that. So a quick little promo there cut by Raven as we have, you know, Daphne, all the other flock members, Vampiro, Boss Man, and Saturn all there. Saturn's getting better at his gimmick. Lita's and uh, Daphne's storyline continued along with the Team Extreme flock angle. We didn't jump into our next match of the night, which gets a solid 82 B rating here. We have a decent matchup. Canyon and Hugh Morris going over Power Plant in 9 minutes, 52 seconds when Canyon defeats Sean Stasiak with a flatliner. Uh, we also saw Regal, you know, get involved in this match as well, providing distraction to both Canyon and Morris. It wasn't enough, though, as I said, though, because Canyon ends up beating Sean Stasiak. They make their third defense of the WCW Tag Team titles, and Canyon carrying this match in terms of in-ring performance. Regal doing some good work ringside. Sean Stasiak with an in-ring performance of a 68, so the weakest of the match here. Mark Jindrak with a 70. Hugh Morris with a 74, and Canyon with an impressive 85. No worker improvements here, though. We then move into our next segment of the night, which gets a 99 A-star rating here. Uh, Michael Cole, I guess I didn't put on screen, so that's my bad. But either way, Michael Cole is backstage with The Rock. He goes on to say, Ladies and gentlemen, joining me at this time is the man who looks to recapture the WWF Championship from The Undertaker, The Rock. Rock, and uh, of course, before Cole can finish his sentence or whatever the hell he's going to say, Rock puts his finger right up against Cole's mouth and he says, Shut up, Cole. The people are chanting The Rock's name hmm finally the rock has come back to the northwest usa and you're right coleman tonight is the night 
The Rock takes back his WWF gold by smacking The Undertaker back into his grave, slamming the coffin shut, and pulling out the people's shovel to bury The Undertaker once and for all. And then after The Rock is done burying the dead man, The Rock is going to walk into WrestleMania and will defend the honor and the pride of the WWF like the fighting champion The Rock is. It don't matter who WCW sends his way. It could be Booker T. Maybe it's Diamond Dallas Page. Chris Benoit. Ric Flair. Or maybe it's Goldberg. Or who? Hell, maybe Sting uh, Sting wins tonight and then it'll be Icon versus Icon. Or... Or, or maybe, maybe Cole, maybe it's the Shockmaster. The fact of the matter is, my Mitchell Cole. All right, hold on, I got, I went a little too far. The fact of the matter is, is that it doesn't matter who WCW sends the Rock's way, because the only thing that matters is that after WrestleMania, no matter if it's Shane McMahon challenging the Rock himself, the WWF will still be here. And if you smell what the Rock is cooking. And then Rock walks away. Cole's like, well, that's a very excited and game Rock here tonight as he looks to recapture the WWF Championship. So there you have it. Uh, Rock came out looking excellent, gained some heat for his feud with The Undertaker. As we jump on to our next segment of the night, which is the Hardcore Championship. 74 B- minus rating here. We have a decent matchup. Raven going over Matt Hardy in 9 minutes, 42 seconds by pinning him after hitting the Raven effect. A lot of interference in here. Uh, Jeff Hardy, Rob Van Dam, they get involved. Perry Saturn and Boss Man, they get involved. But uh, at the end of the day, it is Raven who puts down Matt Hardy to make his fourth defense of the Hardcore Championship. Matt Hardy with a in-ring performance of a 70. Raven with an in-ring performance of a 76. Uh, we are not doing anything here. So there is, even though it's going to pop it up, yes, we do want to move on. We then move across or move along to a 74 B- minus angle right afterwards. A brawl ensues after the Hardcore Championship match. The referee, he gets out of there. Things are, you know, weapons are flying. People are bleeding. He gets out of there while he can. Um, the flock, they're looking to make an example out of Team Extreme. But the trio, they're not going down without a fight. This leads to a brawl to the outside eventually. Where we got Boss Man, Saturn, uh, Raven, Matt Hardy, Jeff Hardy, Rob Van Dam. They're all sitting there brawling. Lita climbs to the top rope. She hits the Lita Salt from the top rope onto the crowd of men taking them all down before sliding back in the ring and taking the mic. She then uh, goes on to say, Daphne, where the hell do you think you're going? As far as I'm concerned, I see a ref cowering right there on the outside, and you and I both are already out here. So get your ass in here, bitch, and let's continue the party. And uh, there you have it. So Daphne just screams at Lita, because mostly she called her a bitch, and uh, she makes her way towards the ring for our WWF Women's Championship match, which is happening right after this. Because Lita makes a good point. They're all out here anyway. Why don't we just do this? Already came across as well. All right. So we jump into the Women's Championship match, which gets a 66 C-plus rating here. Subpar wrestling and little heat to it. Daphne goes over Lita in 8 minutes, 28 seconds by pinfall with the Daphnes after Raven interfered. So Raven still, you know, does his thing. Daphne makes defense number one of the Women's Championship. Did I really say Raven interfered? I did not. The The game itself made Raven interfere. I did a tainted interfere or tainted finish. The game decided that finish was going to be Raven interfering. So there you have it. Oh, no. Lita's got a, uh, a gimmick that's getting stale. I'm going to have to put that down here. Lita gimmick. Raven did some good work ringside. Lita with an in-ring performance of a 65. Daphne with a 49. So that's not too good. But it uh, lost heat to the feud, but that's most likely going to be the end of this feud anyway. So Daphne retains the Women's Championship with help from Raven. All right, we jump into our next segment, which is Vince McMahon arriving. Of course, we're playing as Vince McMahon, so I guess we're arriving. Anyway, 75 B- minus for Vince McMahon showing up. Shane McMahon called him out, so he's here. We know he's here now. We then go backstage to an 85 B+, plus rating here. Michael Cole once again backstage, this time with Test Albert and Trish Stratus. He says, ladies and gentlemen, Michael Cole here, and joining me at this time are the challengers to the WWF Championship later tonight in a Hell in a Cell match, Tess and Albert. And guys, I know things between you and the Steiner brothers have gotten quite personal between you four, but a Hell in a Cell? And then that's when Tess goes on to say, Hell in a Cell is exactly the ways was... Let me try this again. 
was exactly the way things were going to end between the four of us. This started off in a cell when the Steiners took me out before what could have been the biggest moment of my career during the war games. And then they go on to beat us for the tag team titles, taking away my biggest career accomplishment to date. But if that wasn't enough, Scott Steiner thinks he can go on and put his hands on Trish Stratus. Pushing me one step too far, Cole. So you're damn right, hell in a cell. Because tonight, there's nowhere for Scott or Rick to run or hide. Tess and Albert, we're coming for revenge. And we're taking our gold back. Welcome to hell, boys. And then they walk by while Michael Cole's like, well, a very game Tess and Albert here tonight, pretty much. Uh, Test gimmick was getting stale, which we can go ahead and change that now. We're just going to make him a basic badass gimmick, which got an initial rating of very good. So, good on Test. Albert also looked good here. All right, so we then jump in. Wow. This... This actually did pretty good. Huh. The reasoning why I'm surprised for this matchup here, guys, is because, well, this is the fourth time we've held this matchup. Um, I stupidly, I guess, wasn't keeping track of the amount of times Edge and Chuck Palumbo fought each other. So this was the fourth time, and usually when you hold more than, you know, once you do the match too close to each other, uh, like more than three times, it usually does pretty bad, but... Solid 82B rating for these guys here for the United States Championship match. I put this here kind of as a die-down match, but to my surprise, it, uh, it it did good. It did so well, it gained heat for the feud. Anyway, here we go. Solid 82B, good wrestling, decent reaction from the crowd. Edge going over Chuck Palumbo, 10 minutes, 12 seconds later with the spear. Stacey Keebler, of course, provided distraction, but it wasn't enough as Edge makes his second defense of the United States Championship. Chuck Palumbo with a 76, Edge with an 82, and no worker improvements. Huh. Wow, yeah, no note or anything. That's that's the first time I've ever ran a match that close to a four, uh, three times, or four times, I should say. And Wow, I'm really surprised by that. Anyway, we go to a 99 A-star rating in the back. As we're backstage in the WCW locker room area, Sting, he's getting ready for his upcoming title match against Kurt Angle. When uh, someone knocks on the door and guess who? It's me, it's me. It's DDP. How you doing, buddy? Look, congrats and good luck tonight. I don't want to take too much of your time because I know you got one big night ahead of you. I just wanted to stop by and let you know, just like I had your back on Nitro, I've got your back tonight. I know old man Flair and his grandson, Crispy Benoit, are probably still upset about this past Nitro. So if they poke their nose anywhere in your match tonight where it doesn't belong, you can count on me, brother. And then that's when Sting steps up. He shakes Diamond Dallas, you know, his hand, and he says, Thanks, Diamond. I appreciate you, man. DDP responds, and he goes, And I appreciate you. Good luck out there, man. And then DDP goes to walk away. He leaves the locker room and begins walking down the hallway. When he is stopped by Ric Flair, who is just smiling, standing in front of him, he's asking, what the hell do you want, pretty much? But he is jumped from behind by Chris Benoit, who begins to beat down on Diamond Dallas Page last, or in the hallway, pretty much ending it by German suplexing him up against the wall, so his shoulders go up against the wall. Uh, they're then chased off by a bunch of backstage officials and refs, while Sting also comes in and he checks on you know, Diamond Dallas Page, screaming for help. So, uh, pretty much... Benoit and Flair kind of get the revenge on DDP here tonight. At least Benoit did as he takes them out. And even though DDP said he was going to have Ric Flair, or excuse me, Sting's back, he might not be able to now. Ric Flair looked good here as well. So there you go, Rick. And Benoit is learning to show more charisma. All right. So we jump into our Hell in a Cell match here tonight, which gets a solid 81B rating here. We have a bout that had superb wrestling and good heat to it. Steiner brothers go over Test and Albert in 18 minutes, 7 seconds, after Scott Steiner defeats Albert with the Steiner device. Uh, we also have Trish Stratus, you know, she's involved in this match, distracting Scott and Rick, I thought I put, but maybe I missed it. Anyways, the Steiner brothers make their first defense of the Tag Team Championships by beating, the, uh, by beating Test and Albert once and for all. Test took a stump bump in this match. I don't imagine that, you know, they got on the cell or anything. Stump bump mostly, I... I Kind of imagine him going through one of the cells, like, not the top of the cage, but, like, Scott Steiner or Rick Steiner running him through, like, one of the cells on the side. So, that's kind of what I'd imagine there anyway. 
Anyway, I'd imagine this being a pretty hard-hitting match, and at one point, the Steiner brothers actually handcuffing Test up to the, uh, you know, the cage so he can't get out while they just beat down on Albert to get themselves the win. In fact, uh, did it say how they won? No, just by pinfall. Oh, no, Steiner device right there, so there you have it. Uh, Scott and Rick, we already know about their chemistry, not enough selling, uh, not enough psychology, too, so that sucks. Anyway, Albert with an impressive 90 in-ring performance, Tess with an 88, Rick Steiner with an 82, and Scott Steiner with a 99 in-ring performance. All right. So we jump into an 88 B plus to end off this angle here. The match is over and the Steiner brothers have won, but they are looking to finish off Test and Albert once and for all. While Test is knocked out on the outside, handcuffed to the cage, Albert just lays there motionless in the ring. The Steiners hover over them, smiles on their face, looking to take down Albert. That's when Trish Stratus slides into the ring. She jumps over Albert, covering his body, pretty much begging the Steiners to leave him alone, trying to, you know, keep herself between them. Uh, Scott just kind of laughs this off, like, is this chick serious? And then grabs her by her hair, as it looks like he's going to beat down on Trish. Color tom commentary's going crazy. JR, King, Dusty Rose, they're all sitting there, oh, come on, Scott, don't do this, you know, stuff like that. And uh, that's when, finally, fireworks go off on the stage, and out comes the returning Bubba Ray and Devon Dudley, the Dudley Boys. If you remember, it was the Steiners who put the Dudley Boys out of action a while back after slamming them through some tables. They raced down to the ring, making their return to the WWF. They got chains wrapped around their fist. They slide in the ring. The Steiners want none of this. They get out of the ring as quickly as they can. And uh, Dudley's pretty much stand between them and Trish, making sure nothing happens. Making the return and making it quite obvious that, uh, Scott, Rick, we coming for you guys. So there you have it. Dudley Boys return. Scott Steiner looked good. And, uh, yeah. Oh, hell yeah. We go on to our WWF title match, which gets a 95 A-star rating here. That's good stuff. And an unbelievable match. The Undertaker and the, goes over The Rock in 18 minutes, 37, or excuse me, just 30 seconds. No, 37. 18 minutes, 30 seconds after hitting him with the last ride, making his first defense of the world championship. So despite all The Rock's talk, he was not able to get it done here tonight as the dead man retains the championship. He will lead Team WWF into WrestleMania, pretty much. Undertaker with a 96 in-ring performance. Or, yeah, no, other way around. The Rock with a 96 in-ring performance. And The Undertaker with a 97 in-ring performance. Rock is improving in technical. Uh, there's no ha uh, angle after this. I'd imagine they probably shook hands and all that. But uh, there you have it. This upcoming angle, I want to kind of warn you guys before we jump into it. Uh, the way Total Extreme Wrestling works, I have to put the people you know, that are in the angle on screen and all that, or I'm supposed to at least. So when I press the next segment, it is going to jump right in, and there's a huge spoiler for the angle that isn't supposed to happen until kind of like halfway through the angle. So if you don't want to be spoiled, I'd recommend uh, minimizing the video, clicking a new tab, scrolling down to the comment section, wherever you pretty much can't see the video to where uh, you can wait until it's a surprise for me. If you don't mind, it's fine there. Either way, you have been warned. So we move on to a 100% segment here. Oh, just unplugged my headphones. Either way, that doesn't matter too much. Uh, Shane McMahon's music goes off. Here comes the money! And uh, out he comes alongside Booker T. He makes his way down to the ring. The commentators are putting over, you know, he's called out his father tonight. We're going to, you know, Shane's going to explain it all. Why, why, he's, why this war is even happening between him and his dad. Uh, Shane gets in the ring. He asks and receives the mic. He then goes on to say, What's up, Northwest USA? You know, tonight is the night. Tonight is the night I explain it all. And I won't lie. I've got goosebumps. I'm a little nervous. Because I have been waiting for tonight since I told my dad about a year ago that I purchased WCW right from under his nose. Speaking of which, Dad, I know you're here. Let's not waste any more time. Please come out here and join me, Pops. And uh, Vince McMahon doesn't waste any time. His music goes off and out comes the owner of the WWF. He makes his way down to the ring to join his son. Shane, of course, is like, oh, you don't got to worry about Booker. He's not going to hurt you, you know, pretty much. Vince gets in the ring, and he's like, <clears throat> all right, Shane, 
Quit wasting everyone's time and get on with it. And uh, that's when Shane goes on to say, oh, Don't you worry, Pops. I'm going to get on with it. But first, let me ask you a question. And let me pull up the handy-dandy notepad. A few years back, when we discussed the little thing called SmackDown, because you know what? I remember... I remember SmackDown. You know what? I, I don't... I don't think these people actually know the true story behind SmackDown, though, do you? Because you see, SmackDown is actually my idea. I'm the one who pitched the idea behind a second show. In fact, it was supposed to be my show. But you see, my dad and I, we, we were having a discussion about the future of the WWF. Just in case none of you know, my dad is currently 56 years old. And he ain't getting any older. Or excuse me, any younger. I don't know why I put you older there. I had expressed an interest as his son to continue the family business as the owner of the WF. Of course, my dad isn't ready to hand over the keys, which is fair. So we discussed giving me my own show to prove to him that I am ready. And that show was going to be SmackDown. But, you know, last minute you changed your mind and decided I wasn't ready. You didn't even give me a chance to prove myself. So you know what I did? I struck when I saw Opportunity Rose. When WCW went up for sale, I bought your competition and kept it alive. Not only to show you that I can hang with the great and almighty Vincent Kennedy McMahon, but I'm better than Vincent Kennedy McMahon. You thought you were so close to finally ending this war with WCW. And you thought you were, you know, like I was saying, I messed up, hold on. With WCW and barely surviving with your company intact. But now thanks to me, your worst fears will come to life, Dad. Because at WrestleMania, this ends. WCW versus WWF. Both companies up for grab with a winner takes all match. All you gotta do is sign this contract. And I get to end you once and for all. And that's when Vince McMahon rips the contract out of Shane's hand. He says, shut up. You think I give a damn about this contract? He then signs the contract and throws it back at Shane's face. And he goes, WrestleMania, this ends, damn it. You think you're ready for the big lead, Shano? You're just an immature child and this petty war proves it. And that's when Shane, big smile on his face, goes on to say, hey, dad, uh, you know, before you go, you know, there's a reason I chose No Way Out to tell you all this. Because now that you've signed this contract, there's no way out. And there's N-W-O. And then that's when the lights go out and they come back on and you see Hulk Hogan, Kevin Nash, and Scott Hall all surrounding Vince McMahon. They laugh and they mock him as Vince, you know, tries to find a way out of there. Shane finally gives him the order, and you got the New World Order, all three of them, the original three at least, beginning to beat down the owner of the WF while we just have a shock Booker T standing there like, what in the hell is going on? The NWO? So you got NWO, they're beating down on Shane, Mc or excuse me, Vince McMahon. Uh, Kevin Nash lifts him up, and Scott Hall helps Kevin Nash in hitting a jackknife powerbomb onto uh, Vince McMahon, probably a very soft-looking jackknife powerbomb. This is followed by a Hulk Hogan leg drop. They then, uh, you know, rip off his jacket and his shirt before spray painting NWO slash WCW on the back of Vince McMahon. This leads to uh, Triple H actually coming down to the ringside. He's got a sledgehammer in his hand. He rushes down to the ring. He goes after the NWO and Shane McMahon, but, you know, the New World Order, Shane O'Mac and Booker T, they all get out of the ring as quickly as they can. They ain't dealing with the sledgehammer. Stephanie McMahon, she's in tears. She's checking on her father because her father just, you know, got beaten down by three men. Triple H, he's pissed because, you know, his, his wife is a concern. He probably don't care about, uh, you know, Vince McMahon, but his wife, that's his, still his wife's father. So, you know, he's not too happy about this. And there you have it, nerds and geeks. Too long, didn't read. Too long, didn't listen. Pretty much Shane McMahon comes out. He reveals that, you know, SmackDown was his idea. That's kind of my, my story that I went with here. It's not really Shane McMahon's idea to, you know, it could be. I don't think it is. 
But anyway, it's not really his idea. But the whole idea here is Shane McMahon feels he's ready to take over for the WWF. Vince McMahon's not ready to, to give it up. So Shane McMahon and him had that little bit of discussion saying, well, here we are. We're going to prove it. I'm going to create Friday Night Smackdown or Thursday Night Smackdown. Call it what you'd like. You can take over that show. That'll be your show. Monday Night Raw will be my show. And, you know, that could be your way of, you know, getting experience, having your own show until I'm ready to hand the keys over. Last minute, Vince decides, no, 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 you're not ready. We're just going to run SmackDown and I'll run both shows. This pisses Shane McMahon off. Shane McMahon buys WCW to prove to his father that I can too hang with you. And now I'm going to put you out of business since, you know, you don't believe in me. So that's the only way he feels he can get his, you know, prove to his father that he's ready. So that's kind of the whole story here. This leads, of course, to the NWO coming out. And, um, yeah, everyone's been asking for it. There they are. NWO makes their debut at No Way Out. The perfect place. The place they did in real life, too. All right. So 100 A-star. Good stuff here. Both Shane McMahon and Vince McMahon, they improvised well here. Shane McMahon did a masterful job, in fact. So good for him because, well... You're, you're, I would hope he would. This is like his segment right here. This is Shane McMahon's shining moment. Anyway, Hulk Hogan, he has a old school face gimmick. My bad. I didn't change that. Got an initial rating of great, so either way it's good. Scott Hall's egomaniac gimmick got a very good, and Kevin Ash got a very good on his badass gimmick. So the NWO has debuted. And uh, yeah, Stephanie McMahon apparently looked dreadful. Thanks, Steph. Scott Hall is developing better performance skill, and Stephanie is improving in acting. I just hope Scott Hall doesn't uh doesn't shit the bed and just show up high and waste it all the time. All right, semi main event of the night gets an 83 B plus. I put this here kind of purposely, hoping that it would be like a little bit of a die down for the main event of the night, even though I don't expect like an A star or anything from our main event. Still, I don't want that emotional high shit coming on, you know, back to bite me. Although I'm pretty sure the Shane McMahon, Vince McMahon angle, originally that was going to be the, the die down segment, but it made more sense for it to be the in between because I didn't have anything in between there. So either way, uh, we have about that had sensational wrestling and fantastic heat. The team of Stone Cold Steve Austin and Rhino go over vitamin C in 13 minutes, 11 seconds after Rhino defeats Christian with the gore. So there you have it. Austin and Rhino get their win. Austin's getting better at his gimmick. Jericho and Christian have excellent chemistry when teaming with each other. Christian with an in-ring performance of a 94. Good on him. Chris Jericho with a 100. Rhino the weakest of the match with an 87. And Stone Cold Steve Austin with a 99. Jericho is improving in performance. But uh, what's the most thing, exciting thing about this match is what happens afterwards. We go to a 90 solid A rating here. The match is over. Stone Cold Steve Austin and Rhino, they're celebrating their victory with beer. Crowd, you know, the crowd starts erupting. Uh, of course, you know, Austin and Rhino just think it's because they're celebrating. And uh, that's when uh, you see Goldberg slide into the ring after jumping over the barricade, you know, from the crowd. The uh, WWF Intercontinental Champion Rhino turns around at the wrong time, which leads to a spear a ferocious spear, pretty much cutting Rhino in half as, uh, you know, beer flies in the air, and then that leads to Stone Cold Steve Austin slowly turning around, probably beer dripping from his, be his beard as uh, Goldberg just kind of smiles at him and goes running at him. Austin slides out of the ring before, you know, Goldberg can get his hands on him. So he pretty much gets away, uh, out of harm's way from Goldberg, but Rhino does not because uh, Goldberg now turns his attention over to the uh, Stone Cold's protege, Forces him up to his feet and lifts him up to hit the jackhammer to, uh, you know, I, I don't know what I was going to say. I was about to say to hit the jackhammer to beat him, but there's no match. Either way, he hits the jackhammer while looking at Stone Cold, but before he actually hits it, he points at Stone Cold Steve Austin, does the whole neck slice thing, and he goes, you're next, before it's hitting the jackhammer on Rhino, and uh, there you have it. You guys called it at uh, the Royal Rumble when... Uh, Austin and Goldberg had a little bit of an interaction there, but they had to take care of a couple people. Mostly, Austin had to take care of Jericho. Goldberg had to take care of Giant, but now that they've both been taken care of, it looks like Goldberg has turned his attentions towards the Bionic Redneck and what will be a dream match to many. Goldberg was a real star. Stone Cold came out looking excellent. 
All in all, good stuff here, guys. Okay. And here comes the main event of the night. WCW Championship on the line. 83B+, plus definitely should not have been the main event. But, um, that's fine. I ain't that mad. Probably should have been Undertaker and Rock, but the storyline, you know, we were telling, really should have had this be the main event of the night. Anyway, we go to an 83B+, plus in a superb match. Sting goes over Kurt Angle in 22 minutes, 42 seconds. After interference from Ric Flair winning the WCW World Heavyweight Championship. So, uh, kind of an interesting thing here. Ric Flair, despite, you know, the whole story we've been telling, of course, with Sting being the guy to take down both Flair and Chris Benoit to get to this spot. Ric Flair ends up helping him because it is still WCW. And uh, we don't want Kurt Angle as our WCW champion, so... Back and forth match here between these guys. In fact, it was a superb match, which uh, this I believe this was our storytelling match of the night as well. Unless I'm wrong. I might have been wrong. No, I actually let this regular. I think the storytelling match was um, Taker and Rock. I should have made this one it. Either way, back and forth action. It did lead to a pinfall, so I'd imagine the Scorpion death drop is what uh, ended this match for uh, Sting. But either way, I'd imagine Kurt Angle being distracted or taken out by Ric Flair by a title belt. Which will lead to, uh, you know, a possible match between those guys. But either way, Sting, the new WCW World Champion. Again, I knew this should not have been the main event. Only reason it was the main event is because of the story we've been telling here. Uh, but yeah, this definitely should not have been the main event. It should have been Rock and Taker, but... You know me. I gotta get my story in. Sting with an in-ring performance of an 81. Kurt Angle with a 93. And uh, there you have it as we end off the show to get a solid 90A rating here. So still, good show. It's not too bad. We got to tell Taker and uh, Rock that they did one hell of a job. And Chris Jericho got a 100 rating, so I've got to give him. i got to point him out as a you know, great ex example. So let's, tell, uh, let's compliment The Rock and The Undertaker on a good performance. And then let's point Chris Jericho out as a, you know, good example. Good example because he had the 100 uh, in-ring performance. So here we go. Undertaker was happy with our speech. Rock was very happy with our speech. And Chris Jericho was very happy with the speech. Oh, it's Madison Eagles. Hello. All right, here we go. Uh, feedback has been awesome and it's getting fantastic reviews. Good stuff. Abdul the Butcher's retiring. Oh, no. Mark Henry apparently is going to be feuding with Monty Brown. Aren't they a feud? Or aren't they a team? No, they're not a team. They must have stopped them as a team. Assholes. I thought I could. I thought I told them to make them a team. Bull Buchanan going to be feuding with Fit Finley. And CM Punk apparently rising. Who the hell is CM Punk? All right, what do we got here? Point, 1.75 for the uh, No Way Out pay-per-view buy rate. A drug test, okay. <laughs> Kevin Nash says, Chavo Guerrero Jr. doesn't connect with the fans. We should probably write the kid off. Kevin Nash... Oh, is this... Kevin, Chavo didn't even have a match. Goldberg says, Mark Jindrak isn't charismatic. You should release the kid and hire someone better. Goldberg, I'm going to have to say I disagree with you. Good God, it's all negative stuff. Sting says Lance Storm doesn't connect with the fans, in my opinion. He has little upside. Oh, we went up. And then Scott Steiner says Chavo Guerrero doesn't connect with the fans. Well, f screw all of you. I'll have you. I'll have you know I have faith in Chavo Guerrero Jr., Mark Jindrak, and Lance Storm. Three, uh, three point oh three for uh, Sunday Night Heat there. All right. So before we move on, I am going to go ahead and end off some storylines here. As a uh, this storyline is going to end. So let's end this. Billy Kimmon and Vampiro are done. This one will continue going. This one is over. This one is over. Kurt and Sting are over. Lance and Eddie are done. Lita and Daphne. A lot of these storylines are ending, guys. Power Plant and Canyon and Morris. Vitamin C and Rhino and Austin. TNA and the Steiner brothers, unfortunately, Test and Albert. Well, Albert got the shit end of the deal, it looks like. Everyone else did pretty good. Uh, 
I'll keep this going for now, but that that's pretty much ending. And then finally, Rock and Undertaker. All right. So that ends off that. I will have new storylines in the next episode. Hope you guys have enjoyed this episode. If you have, do me a favor. Leave me a comment. Leave me a like. Subscribe if you have not already. Uh, don't forget to share this video with your friends, your Facebooks, your Twitters, all the social media accounts out there that the kids are using. Share this video with the fr uh, friends. You know, someone you think that'll like it. Help the channel out. Help the channel grow. Always greatly appreciated. Before we end this off, let's check out our championships. See if anything uh, really changed. If they went down in prestige or up in prestige. Looks like the Canadian championship is fine. I think you went... Oh, no, no. No, it went up. All right. There you go, Vampiro. Look at... By the way, look at this. We started off with a 33E plus with this title, and we brought it up to a solid 65C. Thank you. I think this went up, too. I think it was like a... Yeah, it was like a C plus. So good on edge there. 90 for the uh, uh, World Championship. So this actually went down. It was an A star. So Sting becoming the seven-time uh, WCW World Champion brought it down a little bit. But that's fine. Uh, speaking of Sting, I do want to check his popularity real quick. See if that went up at all after beating uh, Kurt. So when we hired him, he started around a solid 81B. He is now at an 85B+. Plus. I've got about four or five weeks to build him up. I think I can do it, but uh, we'll see how it goes. It is a huge risk with Sting right now, but we're still rolling with it. Canyon and Morris got a 75B minus. It did go up in prestige, so that's good. Slowly but surely. Hardcore title I don't think moved at all. In fact, it went down. IC title, we're not on it. Why not? That, that, didn't, that wasn't defended, so it doesn't matter. This, uh, it's still around the same. World titles at a 100 prestige. That definitely went up. It was not before at 100, so good on us there. And then finally, the tag team titles are at a 77 solid B, which is about what they've stayed at. All right. Well, I'll see you guys for Monday Night Raw as we officially start our build towards the uh, road to WrestleMania. It's going to be a fun build. It's going to be a little hard because uh, we're taking some risk with some certain people like Goldberg, like Sting, uh, so on and so forth. But, um... I'm excited about WrestleMania, and I hope you guys are. Like I said, if you enjoyed this video, like, comment, subscribe. My name's been OMGWTF, LOLFTWBRB. I will see you guys next time. Have a good day.